In the 20th Forces video lesson, we talked about cars making turns on level and banked road. We learned that on level roads, friction has to be the one to provide the centripetal force to keep the car in circular turn. Because when the car makes a turn like this, its acceleration goes towards the center horizontal. That means uh, the mg and normal force, uh, those vertical forces, cannot contribute to this uh, horizontal acceleration. Only friction can. That means uh, if it's rainy or icy, so the road is slippery, a car would have to be very slow in order to make the turn safely. But in certain situations, we don't want the cars to slow down too much on turns. So what we do is uh, we bank the road. We make the road surface slanted with the outer side of the curve higher than the inner side. We have banked curves on racetracks, highways, and roads with sharp curves. When we bank the road, the normal force on the car goes slanted, which means that it has a horizontal component that can provide the centripetal force. Because even on banked road, the slanted car does circular motion in a horizontal circle. So the centripetal acceleration towards the center is horizontal. At the Daytona International Speedway, the circular turns have about 275 meter radius of curvature, and they are banked at 31 degrees. Find the speed of the car if no friction is needed to provide the centripetal force. The car is making a circular turn in a horizontal circle, so the acceleration goes towards the center, horizontal acceleration. And let's draw the force diagram. There's the mg going straight down, and there is the normal force from the contact surface, and normal force is perpendicular to the contact surface. And we're not using friction, so no friction, that's it. This is a two-dimensional case, so we have to do it one dimension at a time. Now this is not a, like our usual incline problem. See, the acceleration does not just go up or down the incline. The acceleration is horizontal. So in this case, it's easier if we choose a coordinate system that is upright instead of slanted. So in this upright coordinate system, we don't have to find the components for the horizontal acceleration because the acceleration is completely in the horizontal direction. The mg is completely in the y direction and the normal force is slanted. That means that we have to find the components for the normal force. So we have to make a rectangle. Now for this rectangle, normal force upward component goes that way the horizontal component going towards the center providing the centripetal force is uh, that one. Now if I'm drawing carefully, then if this angle is uh, 31 degrees, that means uh, the angle up there is also 31 degrees. So that slim angle is 31 degrees. Now if you want to be careful and find it, uh, we can say this is 31 degrees. So this angle here will be 31 degrees. And that means, uh, since this is a right triangle, that angle there must be 90 degrees minus 31 degrees. And so that one must be 31 degrees. Which means that uh, the upward component is adjacent to the angle. So this upward component is Fn times cosine 31 degrees. That means the horizontal component must be Fn times uh, sine 31 degrees. Okay, now let's write the force equation. In the x direction, this is the only force in the x direction. So the net force equals to ma will just be fn sine 31 degrees equals to ma, the object, the car, is doing circular motion, so acceleration is uh, v squared over r. Now, we have r to plug in. We're looking for v. 
and we don't have M, we don't have normal force. Now, it is possible that the mass can cancel, but uh, we'll have to find normal force, which means that we have to write another equation. So that other equation to write is the force equation in the y direction. So in the y direction, there is no acceleration. The acceleration in the y direction is zero. That means the upward force and the downward force, they are equal. So Fn cosine 31 degrees equals to the downward mg. So from here, I can solve for the normal force, which is the mg divided by cosine 31 degrees, and I can plug this one in right there. So if I plug this one in here, that will be mg divided by cosine 31 degrees times sine 31 degrees. Of course, you can do the calculation, or you can combine these two. Sine divided by cosine, that's 10 theta. And that's m times the v squared over the r is 275, and the n does cancel. Okay, so this part will be like g times the 10, 31 degrees. Of course, I can plug in the g equals to 10, and that equals to v squared over 275. After you plug in g equals to 10, you'll find the speed to be about 40.6 meters per second. Okay, and uh, that's uh, about 91 miles per hour. If a car goes faster than 91 miles per hour, it will have a tendency to slide outward. Therefore, the static friction that is against the tendency to slide would go this way, parallel to the contact surface. So friction will go like that. So this is the friction, and that means the friction will have two components, one going down, one to the right. The friction would have a component going towards the center to help provide the extra centripetal force needed for a faster speed. Of course, in that case, the problem is going to get a lot more complicated because we're going to have a component of a friction showing up in the x direction force equation, and uh, the friction also has a component that's in the y direction that's going to be in this equation. You certainly don't have to be able to solve this problem with friction in the AP Physics B course. Even for the part without friction, I think it may be optional for AP Physics B as well, but I can't really be sure. Problems similar to the banked road problem include airplanes making a turn. When an airplane or a helicopter makes a turn, it tilts just like a car on the banked road. Later on in the fluids unit, we will talk about lift force from airplane wings. When the airplane is tilted, the lift force tilts just like the normal force on the car on a banked road. Or I can have a conical pendulum like this. When this eraser does a circular motion in a horizontal circle, it needs a horizontal centripetal force. So mg cannot contribute to it. Just like the bank the road problem, the slanted tension has a component that provides the centripetal force and a vertical component that cancels with mg. So even though a car turning on banked road an airplane making a turn and a conical pendulum look different. They have the same force diagram, same direction for acceleration. So essentially, they are the same problem.